Um, good morning. Um, before I start with the uh, topic of today, I'd like to remind you that uh, the official date to register for the exam, the deadline for this is finishing to today. Yeah. So uh, in case you are, are willing and intending to uh, participate to the exam, it's better to um, register yourself via the, uh, the usual uh, means. Um, today the, the topic is uh, omega regular properties. So what we have seen last time is we have seen that in order to check a regular safety property against a finite transition system, The uh, procedure was as follows. The idea is that uh, for this regular safety uh, property, uh, we have what we call a bad prefix automaton. And this is because the bad prefixes constitute a regular language, a standard off the shelf non deterministic finite state machine. And then the idea was that we combine this transition system with this non deterministic finite state machine to compose a new transition system, which was something like the singleness product of the two, if I call this A, of the transition system and this bad prefix automaton. And then the question was whether this satisfies the invariant always not F, where F are the accepting states of the NFA A. So what we like to do now is to extend this paradigm, not uh, to just regular safety properties, but to have larger class of properties. So now what I'm interested in, I'm not only interested in regular safety properties, but I'm interested actually in a larger class. And this larger class, which are going to call omega regular properties, and they include, for instance, liveness properties. A large class of liveness properties. What is the problem or the challenge if we are considering liveness properties? Well, we know by definition Counterexamples to liveness properties are no longer finite words, yeah. but they're actually infinite words. So that means we cannot use non-deterministic finite state automata anymore, and we're going to replace this thing by actually an automaton which is called a Buchy automaton. An automaton that accepts not finite words, but infinite words. Yeah, and that's the automaton model that I'm going to introduce today. Good. As we're going to see, this has a specific kind of peculiarities, this kind of model. And then later we're going to see that actually we're going to build again the structure of this thing. We're not going to check this property, but a different property, but the whole paradigm is the same. So the main difference is we want to check a larger class of properties. In order to do so, we need another type of automata model. Good. So this is basically what I already explained before. And the uh, idea that I'm going to introduce today are two new notions, which are omega automata, that are automata that accept infinite words. There are many different classes of them. I'm going to concentrate to Buchy automata. And we are going to concentrate on omega regular expressions. You know from automata theory that regular expressions and non-deterministic finite state machines are equally expressive. Here today we're going to see that non-deterministic Buchy automata and omega regular expressions are equally expressive. Good. So just a short recap of what are regular expressions. Suppose I give you an alphabet sigma containing symbols like capital A, B, etc. 
then uh, regular expressions over this alphabet are according to the following uh, grammar. We either have empty set, we have the empty symbol, then we have the singleton symbol A, we have a plus, we have concatenation, and we have the cleanest star. A, of course, is a symbol in the alphabet, and um, actually any regular expression describes a language of finite words. So actually what we have is we have a function that maps any arbitrary regular expression to the set of words, the set of finite words described by this regular expression. This is defined by induction on the structure of the regular expression. So we start with the first case, the empty set. What is the set of finite words described by the empty sets? It's the empty set. Yeah. This is the empty set of the set of finite words, but this is the regular expression empty set. They're two different things. Then the empty regular expression or the empty this symbol is actually language described by this is the singleton set containing the empty word. So here you see the explicit difference between this regular expression and the second regular expression. I hope it's easy to understand that the language of the symbol A is just the set of finite words only containing the word A. Plus, which stands for a choice, amounts to the union of the two languages of the two constituting parts. A concatenation, the language of alpha 1 concatenated with alpha 2 is the language of alpha 1 concatenated with the language of alpha 2. And cleaner closure, the language of alpha star, which means zero or more times alpha, is, equi is equal or is defined by the language of alpha star. So you take the set of words described by alpha and you can repeat them zero or more times. I hope this is basically an aha erlebnis for you from automata theory and not something new. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define omega regular expressions. So here we have seen the syntax of regular expressions. Now I'm going to introduce omega regular expressions in a nutshell. They are regular expressions plus one extra bit. And this is this omega operator where alpha to the power omega. And that intuitively means you look at the regular expression alpha and now you can repeat any word in the set of words described by alpha infinitely many times. No? So it's different from the cleanest star where you say zero or more times but finitely many. Omega says infinitely many. Good, that's what I just said. So how is this defined? If you give me a set of finite words over some alphabet sigma, then L of omega is defined as the set of infinite words such that you take some words in finite words from the language L and you concatenate them. So for instance, first I take W1, then I take W2, then I take W3 and so forth, and every W here is a finite word contained in L. Good. Um, notice that uh, L omega is contained in sigma omega, so this definition that we just have seen, if, however, the empty word is not in the language. Good. So what's the syntax of an omega regular expression? And then we will see several examples. So an omega regular expression is defined as follows. You give me an alphabet, which is a finite set of symbols. Then we define an omega re regular expression, in this case gamma, which is defined of n terms. It's a summation of n terms. Every term consists of two parts alpha and a beta. So this alpha is just an ordinary regular expression. And then you say concatenated with an ordinary regular expression beta 1, but this beta 1 is to the power omega. So it means you take the regular expression alpha and then you take beta 1 omega. And then you have several of those summons. 
Good. There is one small technical thing, namely these betas do not contain the empty word. Good. And then the semantics of a regular expression is now defined in terms of the semantics of ordinary regular expressions. So the set of infinite words described by gamma is defined as the following. First, I have to consider all these n terms. So a plus corresponds to a union. Therefore, I get a union over all these terms, n pieces. What is the set of infinite words described by one single term? Now, consider such a term. Now, you look at alpha i, and L of alpha i is the set of finite words described by alpha i. Remember, alpha is just an ordinary regular expression, so it's a set of finite words. And then it's concatenated with the set of finite words of beta i to the power omega. Good. And this is uh, actually an infinite language, so a, a set of infinite words. And the set is contained in the set of infinite words that I can, can, can construct over the alphabet sigma. Good. So, a very easy, I hope, first example, A star B omega. So this is something of the form where alpha is empty and you have some beta and beta is alpha star dot B and that's to the power omega. Yeah? Good. What's the language of this term? Now intuitively what does this term mean? It means you take zero or more times a B and then have a, an A, sorry, and then you have a B. So this contains words of the following form. This language consists, for instance, contains the word B, 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 infinitely many Bs. You always take zero times an A. Yeah. It also contains the word uh, B, A, B, A, A, B, A, 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 B, A, 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 B, and so forth. Yeah. Every time you increase the number of Bs between two successive, uh, A's between two successive Bs. Um, what is not contained is something like this, A, 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 A. This is not contained in the language of this regular expression, omega regular expression, because this requires that you can do only finitely many times an A and then you have to do a B. And this pattern has to repeat it infinitely often. And this is not the case here. Good, so it's the set of infinite words over the alphabet AB containing infinitely many Bs. No, this does not contain infinitely many Bs, therefore it's not contained. Even if you would add a prefix where you have uh, a finitely many Bs, this is not contained because this omega really tells you that you should have infinitely many Bs. What's the language of this term? So here is a omega expression of two things, so this is of the shape gamma is alpha 1 beta 1 omega plus alpha 2 beta 2 omega, right? Alpha 1 is empty, yeah. beta 1 in my case is a star dot b, alpha 2 is also empty and beta 2 is actually b star a omega. Good. So you hope you see the symmetry here between A and B here, just the role of B's and A's have changed. So this is the set of language that contains infinitely many B's or infinitely many A's. Good. And that's actually all words you can build, all infinite words that you can build over sigma. Good. We call a language. So now you s give me a set of infinite words. And this language, this set of infinite words is called omega regular. If and only if you can describe this language by means of an omega regular expression. That means there exists an omega regular expression omega, uh, uh, gamma. 
such that the set of infinite words described by gamma equals the language of infinite words you give me. Good. So, some examples. Suppose that we are given the finite alphabet AB. I'm interested in the set of all infinite words over sigma containing only finitely many A's. So how can I write this down? This looks like a term as follows. A plus B star dot B omega. This means you can take any arbitrarily but finitely many times an A or a B. That's what the star tells you. And at some point you only have B's. Yeah. So these are words that have infinitely many B's but only finitely many A's. The set of all infinite words where each A is followed immediately by B. So that's something of the form AB and then omega. But you have to be a little bit uh, careful. Um, so this is the way uh, you can write it down. So here you have this pattern that every A is immediately followed by a B. This A itself, of course, can be preceded by arbitrarily many but finitely many Bs. This pattern can repeat. But this whole sentence doesn't say anything about the fact how many A's can occur. So we're going to distinguish the case where we only have finitely many A's or the case where we have infinitely many A's. This is the case where we have finitely many A's. That means that we have finitely many A's which are immediately followed by a B. But at some point we only see B's. And this is the similar pattern. So again, this A can be preceded by fin finitely many B's, but if this A comes, it of course needs to be immediately followed by a B, and this pattern happens in, in, in infinitely often. So what is important here is that the first term refers to the fact that A happens finitely many times, the second summoned refers to the fact that A occurs infinitely many times. The set of all infinite words where each A is followed by B, but not immediately followed at some point later. Maybe not at the first position, maybe at the third, fifth position, maybe on the 21st position. So this is written down as follows. So again, a similar pattern. We distinguish between finitely many A's or infinitely many A's. Now we're going to change the pattern that A is immediately followed by B by saying we have an A, at least one. A plus means A followed by A star. So this means that we have an A, maybe it's followed by a couple of other A's and only then the B comes. Yeah, so it's not, that's the difference between immediately and at some position later. And the pattern repeats here. And you see that here, this means that A happens infinitely often. The case where you have to distinguish between finitely many times and infinitely many times in one regular expression is, is, a, is a pattern that you see very often in these omega regular expressions. Good. You, in this case, um, you can simplify this term a bit. So I started from this and then I generalized this to this setting. Uh, from here it's not difficult to see that now you get something of the form a star dot b omega because you say okay there can be an a uh, there can be zero or more times an a and that can be at some point uh, followed by a b okay now we're going to apply this to properties remember our idea was that we do not only have regular safety properties but we're going to restrict or enlarge the class to omega regular. So I'm going to consider an LT property, which is a set of infinite traces. And we call E an omega regular property. Yeah, if it can be described by an omega regular expression. So that means there is an omega regular expression gamma, such that the property we are interested in is exactly the set of infinite words described by the omega regular expression gamma. So it's not, as before, the set of bad prefixes that I can describe by a regular expression. No, it's the property itself that we can describe by an omega regular expression. Good. So examples. Suppose that I uh, have the alphabet small a and small b, which are the atomic propositions. And I like to check always, or I would like to express always a or not b. 
This is the omega regular expression that does as follows. Always A or not B. So I'm going to take all the subsets of AB that satisfy this formula. The first subset that satisfies this formula is the empty set, right? Because it satisfies not B. The second set that satisfies this uh, formula is single, the singleton set A because it satisfies A. And then also, of course, every extension thereof, so A comma B is satisfying the formula. Any of these formulas is fine. And now I can repeat any of them infinitely often, so I get infinitely often this thing. Yeah. So what does this mean? It means that I can make any mixture of those three ingredients in an infinite sequence. So I can start with empty set a couple of times, then maybe I have an A, then I have a B, then again I have a couple of times on the uh, empty set, then I have a B, and then maybe I have A, and maybe from here on I only have A's. Yeah? This is a possible word in this language. And I hope you see this is satisfying the fact that always along this sequence A holds or not B holds. Question? This is the empty set that is part of the regular expression. And I use a smaller zero, a smaller circle if I talk about the set of words that is the empty set. Yeah? And that way I try, to, I try to distinguish between the two. Yeah? I did this also on the previous slide. If you look carefully, the empty set symbol in the, as a regular expression is smaller than the uh, one that is a semantics, which is the set of empty set of words. Yeah? But it's a good point, it's an overloading in, in some sense of this symbol and you have to make precise uh, what this symbol means in which setting. So this means actually every invariant is omega regular um, because for every invariant condition you can write something like this down. So uh, this is uh, written down here, suppose I give you an invariant, remember an invariant is given by some propositional logical formula, so suppose that the set of atomic propositions satisfying this uh, propositional formula is A1 up to AK, then the invariant always phi holds is simply written down as either A1 or A2, etc., or AK, and this pattern repeats infinitely often. Good. Um, infinitely often A. This is a regular expression that looks as follows. Remember the original set of atomic propositions is AB. Infinitely often A. That means we allow any set containing A infinitely often. What are the sets that contain A? Well, either it's a singleton set or it's the set AB. Right? This pattern repeats infinitely often. And this can be preceded by any finite period where B or A doesn't, where, sorry, where A does not occur and the sets where A does not occur is the empty set and the singleton set B. So finitely many times I have this pattern followed by this pattern and this can repeat infinitely often. Eventually A, A happens at some point in the future or now. This is written down in a regular expression as follows. You have some finite prefix Right? Where basically you allow everything. So think about this as just true. True applies finitely often. Then you have some pattern that says, okay, you have to have an A. So either A in the singleton set or A in the set AB. And then afterwards, if e, A has occurred, it's basically it doesn't matter what happens afterwards. And that's 2 to the power AP omega again. 2 to the power AP is simply the sum of all possibilities of all subsets of A, B. Good, from some moment on always A, that means you have some finite prefix, there can be A's and B's around all the places, and at some point you only see an A. In terms of a regular expression, this looks as follows. You have a finite prefix where you see any arbitrary subset. From some point on, we only see A's, that means either we see this or we see that. Good. 
Actually, I use, prefer to use formulas rather than those sums of sets and so on. So, for instance, this was the invariant. Uh, I will use the abbreviation A or not B omega as being an abbreviation of this right-hand side by saying this property holds infinitely often at every position, infinitely often A. I will use this expression typically. It says, okay, I have some positions where A does not occur, and this happens finitely often, and then A occurs, and this pattern repeats infinitely often. So this is a shorthand for this expression on the right-hand side. Similarly, from some moment on, always A. This is something with the form, yeah, you have some finite prefix where you do not have any impose not any restrictions, and from some point on you only see A's. And things when, like this, whenever A, then B will hold some time later. This can be expressed by this complicated term. This says, okay, it's a very similar pattern as we have seen before. We have A, then we have some finite prefix, and at some point later we have B. And this is the case where A happens only finitely often. And this is the case where A happens infinitely often. That means this A can maybe be preceded by some prefix where A only holds finitely, finitely uh, where not A holds finitely often. Then between A and B there can be some finite words between A's and B's, and this repeats infinitely often. This is a huge expression, um, and we use typically symbols, uh, logical symbols for this. So this is um, concluding the fact on omega regular expressions. Now you know from automata theory that NFAs are equally expressive than regular expressions. Hmm. What does that mean? Uh, it means in both directions. If you give me an NFA, the language is always can be written down as a regular expression. And the other way around, if you give me a regular expression, there exists an NFA that accepts exactly that language. Now, what we're going to see now, the same thing uh, holds for omega regular expressions. With another automaton model, and this automaton model is called an NBA, and that's a non-deterministic Buchy automaton. The name Buchy comes from the inventor of this type of automata. Somewhere in the 1950s, uh, Buchy invented these kind of models, and therefore they're called non-deterministic Buchy automata. So this automaton model is equally expressive as omega regular expressions, as we're going to see, and vice versa. So that means that every omega regular expression can be modeled by an automaton accepting that language, and vice versa, the language of every non-deterministic Buchy automaton can be written down as an omega regular expression. Good. So the syntax is the same as for NFAs, but the interpretation will be different in terms that we are going to accept infinite words. So we're going to look at infinite runs and infinite words. So the syntax is the same as what we had before, set of states, alphabet, etc. nothing special. But now what we have is we feed this automaton with an infinite word. So the word A0, A1, A2 is an element of the alphabet omega. Good. And now we say that we have a run. So what's a run for this word? This is again a state sequence like an ordinary automata. We have to start an initial state and every successor state, QI plus one, must be a successor of qi when I read in this state qi the next input symbol a of i. Same as before, difference being infinite words, so infinite runs. When do we call a run accepting? A run is accepting if we visit some accepting state infinitely often. Okay? Good. Let's do uh, maybe some example. So uh, the first example is uh, this automaton here, and then we go here. This is A, 
and this is A. Okay? Good. What is the set of infinite words accepted by this automaton? Well, we have to visit the accepting state infinitely often. So we have to visit this state infinitely often. So if this is automaton A1, yeah, then the language of A1 is the set of words that contains A omega. So it's the regular expression A omega, if you want. Yeah. Good. What about this automaton? Okay. Uh, good, sorry for the break, uh, unexpected break. Um, so um, the, the example I was just discussing before the fire alarm uh, started um, was in this automaton we agreed on the fact that this um, accepts um, the word A omega. Um, what about this automaton? No, it does not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really uh, A omega, which means uh, basically the only, infinite, the only infinite word is accepted by this automaton, which is an infinite string of A's. Yeah? Good. What about this automaton over here? Now, we have to visit this state infinitely often. The problem here is that if we visit it once, we can never visit it again. So the language of this automaton, if I call this A2, is the empty set. Yeah, it does not contain any infinite word. Good. So this is the, 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 the Buchi automaton view. Yeah. And actually, officially, I should write down L omega and L omega. Yeah. Good. Now consider the same automata. So this was the NBA view. Now consider the same automata, but now as finite state automata. So what's the language, the set of finite words of A1? Now it accepts a word which has one A, it accepts a word that has two A's, three A's, four A's, etc. So the language accepted by this thing is something of the form A n plus one, where n is a natural number. OK? What about this automaton? We have to reach the final state only once, right? So when can we reach this? After 1a, after 2a's, after 3a's, etc. So the language of this automaton is the same. It's a n plus 1 for any natural number n. So this means that these two automata are equivalent if from a finite automaton perspective, but they are different from the Buchi perspective. Okay? Good. Now let's look at another example. And the next example is, uh, let's say, A3. There is an automaton that looks as follows. Okay, again I make two views. One is the Buchi automaton view, and the other one is the finite state automaton perspective. Good. What is the set of infinite words accepted by this automaton? Well, we have to visit this state infinitely often. The only way to do this is take the cycle infinitely often. So the language, the set of infinite words accepted by this automaton, is A omega. Okay? We have to cycle infinitely often the, the cycle and uh, we, then we accept the infinite one. And now look at A4, which is the same automaton, but I swap the order of the two states. Yeah, so I make this non accepting, I make this accepting. Again, 
what's the accepted set of accepted uh, infinite words accepted by this automaton, we have to visit this state infinitely often. That means we have to take this cycle infinitely often. So this is a omega. That means these two automata are equivalent if you consider the set of infinite words they accepted. Now let's consider the finite words accepted by these automata. What's the set of words accepted by A3? Now we have to visit this state. We can visit this after 1A, after 1, 2, 3 A's, 5, 7, 9. So after an odd number of A's, every word which has an odd number of A's is accepting. So this is something of the form a to the power 2n plus 1 for any natural number n. What about this? This accepts first the empty word, then accepts a word that has two a's, four a's, six a's, etc. So this automaton accepts the set a 2n where n is a natural number. So here these two automata are different. Yeah? Whereas here they are equal. They accept the same set of infinite words, but we cannot conclude from that that also they accept the same finite words, because here you see a counterexample. Okay, any questions about these examples? No? Good. Good. So the language is the set of infinite words, fine. So I use the same notation as before, I already skipped this by means of example. So here is another example. Um, this the alphabet is AB. We have to uh, visit Q1 infinitely often. You can only reach Q1 by doing an A. Yeah, all the incoming arrows are labeled with A. So we have to do infinitely often an A. Yeah. Or in terms of a regular expression, what you see is you can do finitely many times a b by cycling around. I will look for my pointer. Um, so you can do finitely many times a b, and sometimes you do an a. You can go back, but you have to go infinitely often to q1, so you have to do infinitely often an a. Um, what about this automaton? So what you see here is you can do an a, here you can cycle with a's, and then you can do a b. You have to visit this state infinitely often. You can only do this by doing this A. So uh, this actually has accepted words of the following form. You can do an A, an A, and then a B, and then an A, and an A, and a B again. Or you can do something like only A's. Um, and actually this is the, the language where every B is preceded by a positive even number of A's. Every B is preceded by a positive even number, so 2, 4, 6, right? Either it's 2, or you take this cycle again, or you take this, oh, this thing. If b doesn't occur, then this is trivially fulfilled, right? Then you have just have infinitely many a's. But you know that every b is preceded by a positive even number of a's. Good, and you can write down this in terms of a regular expression, um, where you have an even number of a's, positive amount, then you can do a b and you can repeat this infinitely often. Or you have, you do this finitely many times, so zero or more times, and then you do only a's. Yeah. So this is the regular expression, the same pattern as we have seen before. This is the pattern where a, um, uh, where basically b occurs infinitely often, and this is the term where b occurs finitely often. And you always have to distinguish the two cases. Good. So um, what we're going to do is the same as in the previous lecture. The alphabet is something of the form 2 to the power AP. So these NBAs will get as input sets of atomic propositions. Good. So uh, this is, for instance, a property. Again, I use a logical notation. So I use true. Suppose that AP is AB. Then true means any subset of AB. Not A means any subset that does not contain A. Same logical notation as we have seen in the previous lecture. What is the language accepted by this automaton? We have to visit this state infinitely often. 
So that means, okay, this means you do one times a true, then you have not A, and then you don't care. So this is something of the form next, I mean in the next position, not the current position, the next position, not A must hold, and then actually everything is fine because the self loop says true, which means every subset. So this is the regular expression, true, not A, true. The next position must fulfill not A, and that's it. What about this? Uh, this, uh, this is one automaton. Um, it contains two initial states and two accepting states. When does it accept? Well, either if A holds now, or if not B holds now. So the regular expression accepted by this automaton is A or not B hold now, and what comes afterwards is actually everything is fine, so it's true omega. So you see that this automaton is an automaton representation of the property A or not B holds now. Of course, this is not the unique automaton. You can also give me another automaton expressing the same property. This is just an example. Um, things like this. Uh, you have to visit this state infinitely often, which means infinitely often an A, and you see as soon as A or not B holds, you get to this state, but then you never get back. So then actually uh, you will not accept anymore. So this accepts always A. Um, something that this you have to visit Q1 infinitely often. You can only reach Q1 by doing an A. So definitely you have something of the form infinitely often A. What else do you know? Well, you know that either A or B holds. So this is something like infinitely often A and always A or B. Yeah, because always A holds by taking any transition or a B holds. And that's why you get something of this form. So you can do A or B finitely many times, and then do an A, and you can repeat this pattern infinitely often. Good, I skipped this. So um, now I'm going to the following fact. We're going to see, as I already was anticipating, to the following result. These non-deterministic Buchi automata are equally expressive as omega regular expressions. Good. So the first direction I'm going to show you is the direction which goes in that direction. I start from an NBA. We're going to see that for every NBA, the set of accepted infinite words is always captured by an omega regular expression. So the first result tells us for every non-deterministic Buchi automaton, there is an omega regular expression such that the set of infinite words accepted by the automaton is exactly the set of infinite words described by the omega regular expression gamma. Yeah. And remember, those gammas had the following form, right? It was of the form alpha 1 dot beta 1 omega plus plus alpha n beta n omega with the capture that the empty word does not belong in the language of any of those betas. Yeah, for all i. So alpha is a finite word, beta is a, uh, is a language of finite words, beta 1 is a set of finite words, etc. Yeah, so this is the pattern we are looking for. Good. How can we prove this? We start from an arbitrary NBA. And now I'm going to do the following trick. I'm going to consider the automaton APQ, AQP. What is AQP? Q and P are states in my NBA, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the automaton with the same set of states, the same alphabet, the same transition function, but I'm going to assume we're going to start in Q, right? Notice Q does not necessarily have to be uh, an initial state, but we start in Q. And the set of final states is the singleton set P. Then the language of this automaton is described as follows. It's I take such an automaton from A to from Q to P, and I do this, of course, only for those Qs that are initial. Now, only those will contribute to the set of words that I'm going to accept. We have to start in the initial state. So that's what the first union tells us. Pick any Q which is initial, pick any accepting state P, 
Now consider Q and P, I take the automaton that I basically do by making Q initial and P the accepting state. So that means that basically if in terms of a picture I do the following. Yeah, if this was my original automaton, the NBA, what I do is uh, I pick some initial state, I call this Q. I take an accepting state, I call this P, the rest is not initial, not accepting, that's what the construction AP, A, Q, P does. Now the first thing tells you, take, oh this is bad, take a finite word that brings you from Q to P. What does that mean? We're going to consider as a run, a finite run that brings us from Q to P. Yeah. Now we have reached this accepting state once. Is this enough? No, because we have to reach this, this final state infinitely often. How do can we do this? Well, we are going to look for a cycle, and this cycle needs to go from P to P itself. Of course, this cycle needs to have at least one transition, yeah, because otherwise we already stay there. So we are considering a language of finite words that leads us from P to P and we exclude explicitly the empty word. Good. I hope you understand the rationale behind it. Secondly, I hope you see that this is an omega regular expression. Yeah? It has this shape that you have uh, finite words, namely the, the words uh, here, and then followed by a beta which does not contain the empty word. Yeah? For good reasons here. Good. This is omega regular because this language is regular and this is a regular language. By, by excluding the empty word, it still remains a regular language and therefore it fits the pattern of being a regular expression. One other argument, this is a finite union and this is a finite union so we get a finite summation, which is this n, the number of terms in my regular expression. Good, let's look at an example to make this more explicit. So here is an example of a non-deterministic Büchy automaton. It has two initial states, uh, one and two, and one accept state, two. Good, what is the language accepted by this automaton? Following the construction of the previous slide, we're going to pick every initial state separately. Let's first start with initial state being one. That means we have to go from initial state one to the accept state. There is only one accept state, so therefore get two. From two, I have to find a cycle. And that means I go from two to two with L prime, and L prime is the language to go from two to two, minus the empty word. And I take this omega. What is the second possibility? The second possibility that this initial state is considered, which is number two. I have to go from two to itself. So that is indicated here by L going from two to itself. Here the empty word is included. Yeah, so it's L22, two two, not L prime two two. Now I have to find a cycle going from two to two, a non-empty cycle, and therefore I take L prime two two omega. Okay? Good. So how are these languages constructed? So I first have to construct an automaton, A12, where 1 is the initial state and 2 is the accept state. And I have to consider the automaton A22, where 2 is the initial state and 2 is the accept state. So this is the automaton A12. You take the original NBA, you make 1 the only initial state. That means 2 is no longer an initial state and you make two the only accept state, but it was already the only accept state, so for the accept states nothing will change. You consider this as an ordinary finite state automaton. So you look at what is the accepted set of finite words of this automaton, yeah? because this uh, L12 is just a set of finite words. So you can apply your off-the-shelf knowledge on automata theory that the language of this automaton is something of the form, well, we start here, either you can go here, you do an A, and then there are two possibilities, either you take this cycle finitely often, 
which is this BA, or you take the outermost cycle, which is triple A in a sequence. Good. How do I get L prime 2, 2? For L2, 2, I don't put, depict this here. This goes in a very similar way. The interesting thing here is this L prime 2, 2, which is L2, 2, but minus the empty word. What is the problem here? The problem here is that 2 is an initial state. Yeah? So I have to do a special trick to avoid that this automaton accepts the empty word. The way to do that, and actually that's something we have seen already also before, you basically make a copy of 2, I call this init, which is a copy in the following sense. It's not accepting, but it's initial. This is not initial. And for the rest, I copy the outcoming transitions of 2. So this 2 has, in this case, a tr B transition to 1 and an A transition to 3. So this state becomes a B transition to 1 and an A transition to 3. Yeah. I hope you understand that this automaton is, again, a finite state automaton. We have to consider what is the set of finite words accepted by this automaton. And this is of the form BA, because I can go with B and then with A and I accept. Or it's something of the form where I can do A, A, A. And then, of course, I can cycle further. That's what the plus tells us. And uh, therefore, I can then combine any combination of BA and triple A's. Now I can put the bits together. What does that mean? I now know what is L prime 2, 2, which is this regular expression. I know L 1, 2. And then I also, it's easy to find L 2, 2. You have to basically take this without the empty word. So the language of A is actually follows from this. How do I get to this? Maybe this goes a bit too quick. Look at the first term. L 1, 2 followed by L prime 2, 2 omega. So you take this word, right? And then you get this, okay? And you put this infinitely often because this gets infinite here. Now you see that this term BA plus AAAA is the same as this BA and AAA. So I can combine these terms and then it follows quite straightforwardly that I get of something of the form A and then this term omega. Yeah, because I can combine this term over here within the star brackets the cleanest star with this term over here, and that gives me infinite. And a similar reasoning to the second component gives us BA plus triple A omega. Good. And this, of course, is an omega regular expression. Good. You can simplify this a bit by saying A plus epsilon, because this is preceded by epsilon with this term, if you would like to simplify this. Good. So that was the construction where I showed that starting from a, a non-deterministic Buchi automaton, the language is accepted by, well, the accepted language can be, uh, uh, is always uh, an omega regular expression. Now the other way around. So now I'm considering this direction. This was the direction we just have seen, and now I'm considering the direction backwards. So the claim will be, for every omega regular expression, gamma, there exists a non-deterministic Buchi automaton that accepts exactly the set of infinite words described by the omega regular expression. Good. So, written down formally, for every omega regular expression gamma of this form, there exists an NBA such that the set of infinite words accepted by the NBA equals the set of infinite words described by the regular expression. Good. How can we show this? Um, what I'm going to do is basically we start from the omega regular expression. So what are we going to do? We know that alpha 1 is a set of infinite of a set of finite words, and we know that beta 1 is a set of finite words. So I take the alphas and I take the betas and I construct using off-the-shelf automata theory, a non-deterministic finite state machine for those regular expressions. So, so I have all the ingredients, the alphas and the betas. Now we construct, starting from the NFA for beta i, an NBA, so now a Buchi automaton, that takes into account this superscript or exponent omega. Then we have to construct 
something like the concatenation because I want to build an automaton, for instance, for this term. How do I do this? I take the non-deterministic finite state automaton for the blue part, the Buchy automaton for the green part, and I glue them together by a concatenation. Similarly, then at the end, what I have to do is I have to do the summation. Well, that's the easy part. How do I get the summation? I take the finite union over all terms, over all n terms, of the automata that I already constructed for every term. They were indicated with these c's over there, so I take those c's and I take the union of those things. So let us go through those three constructions one by one to show you how this works. So the assumption is we have non-deterministic finite state machines for the blue and for the green parts, the green parts without the omega. So let's start with the NBA for the union. Well, that's very straightforward. I show this by means of two NBAs. So suppose I just have two NBAs constructed, one on the left and one on the right. How do I get the union? Well, you just combine them and consider them as one Buchy automaton. That's trivial. I hope you see you can either start there, so you accept every word that A1 accepts, or you can start there and then you accept any word that A2 accepts. Good. So that's trivial. Next step. How can we concatenate a finite state automaton with a Buchy automaton? So, that's exactly what this slide is going to suppose to say, the concatenation of an NFA and an NBA. I, I'm, I rather refrain from giving you the formal definitions. You can find them uh, in, the, in the book, in the lecture notes. I rather would like to convey the intuition. So here we have an NFA and here we have an NBA. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, basically do a concatenation. So I want to construct an NBA that accepts all infinite words that start with a finite word accepted by the left, by this A1, followed by an infinite word accepted by the automaton here on the right. The way we're going to do this is as follows. Um, actually, finishing, I mean, this Q was an accepting state, but becomes non-accepting. I hope the intuition is clear. Uh, if we finish here, this is not sufficient because we have to uh, visit some accept state here infinitely often, which we don't if you visit this once. So that's definitely not an accept state anymore. Then I have to connect the automata. Now look at P0. P0 was an initial state here. It no longer is an initial state anymore because every word needs to be first, let's say, accepted by this automaton. So I make P0 non-initial. Then I keep the rest of the structure of P0 as is, it had two outgoing arrows, it will still have two outgoing arrows. And from Q, yeah, I can uh, basically continue with the second automaton and I do this by basically uh, equipping this state with all the outgoing arrows of P P0. And those are the A's and the B's. The accept states are the accept states of A2. So for instance, if this was an accept state in A2, it remains an accept state in A2. Are you allowed to use epsilon transitions? Well, in Buchy automata, we don't allow epsilon transitions, typically. Uh, then you could easily, I mean, if, if in terms of an NFA, you can simplify this construction a bit. I agree. Yeah. In this, I assume no epsilon transitions. Okay. So you can't simplify? No. Good. Then there is a special case if this, suppose this was an initial state, could be. Yeah. Remember, we have this form. Alpha i, beta i, omega. This does not have uh, the empty word, but this can have the empty word. Yeah. That would mean that in this case, this state is both accepting as well as initial. How does that work? The construction is the same, but then I hope you understand that this becomes initial now. Yeah? This was initial and it now remains initial because basically this was initial. So I should be able to start here because I can start with the empty word. Yeah? 
So that's a kind of a special case that you have to treat here. Good. Last part. The last part is we start with an NFA for the beta i. So we have an NFA for beta i, and now what I want is want to do beta i omega. So how do we do the omega operator applied on an NFA? So this is the ID. You have an NFA. This NFA accepts a regular language, let's say L, which is a set of finite words. It does not contain the empty word. Why not? Because we are considering these betas, and we know by definition we start with an omega regular expression, so these betas do not contain the empty word. Good, so therefore it's sigma plus and not sigma star. Then we want to construct an NBA for which language? Well, for the same language L here, but now L omega. Okay? So the first naive ID could be if this is my NFA, then, and I suppose here is an accept state. Now I have to visit this accept state infinitely often. So the intuition could be you just redirect. Yeah? I mean, you, for instance, equip this. This has a, b. So the idea is that I can consider this again as an initial state because I want to visit this state infinitely often. So why don't we include a directed edge from q to q1 labeled with a, and similarly from q to q2 labeled with b, copying the edges starting from the initial state q0. Unfortunately, this is incorrect. Why is this incorrect? Well, because from Q you can have other behaviors that can uh, continue and you have to take them into account as well. So this naive ID is not immediately applicable. It's correct if Q has no other outgoing transitions, then this naive ID works, but otherwise it's, uh, it's uh, for all accepting states, but otherwise this does not work. So um, what's the ID? The ID is the following. Um, so we first are going to construct from an NFA for a language does not contain the empty word, an NFA, B, such that all the final states are terminal. Why? Yeah, then we can use this construction. Good. How are we going to do this? Suppose that this is the current situation. We have some state Q and some final state P, but this P has some other outgoing edges. What are we going to do? We're going to make a copy of P, so that's my P prime here. I'm going to make P prime accepting and P non-accepting. And uh, for the rest, I'm not changing here the outgoing, uh, the outgoing uh, uh, edges. Um, and now I transform this into an NBA. And this can be done as follows. Suppose this is the situation that Q0 has this B transition. Now I'm going to add from this new final state, I'm going to copy this edge which moves here, which is this uh, Q state. To this B transition to the Q state. Good, and now it's not difficult to show anymore by proving the inclusion from left to right and inclusion from right to left that uh, the language of this NFAA that I started with, omega, is actually the set of infinite words accepted by B omega. Example, so here is an NFA for A B star, A B star. I want to have an NFA B. First of all, what I'm going to do is uh, we, we see that this final state has at least one outgoing edge. So we cannot do the naive construction. We make a copy of P. So here is P. I make a copy of P, which is P prime. Then this A transition is copied because I go to copy from Q naught to P prime. P prime does not have any outgoing edges, but uh, P has well a B transition here, and P will still have the self loop. Yeah. This can still accept uh, A B star because it accepts A zero Bs or A one B or A and then finitely many Bs, and then we go there, etc. Good. Now we go to an NBA. Why do we get to an NBA? Now we look at P prime. P prime stays to be the accepting state. And now we have to see that uh, actually we have to copy all the outgoing arrows from Q0 because the idea is that we can start once we have reached P prime as being fresh. So consider this again as being the initial state from the next iteration. And that means we have to copy this A transition. That means that P prime is going to be equipped 
with an A transition going to P. That's the copy of this A transition. And Q0 can go to P prime, and that's literally copied by having the self loop at P prime labeled with A. Good, and this is an NBA for A, B star, omega. Good, so what we have seen is the following. For every NBA there exists an omega regular expression. The other way around. For every omega regular expression there exists an equivalent NBA. Equivalent meaning they express the same set of infinite words. Good, and that means immediately the following. If you give me an LT property, which is omega regular, remember an omega regular LT property simply means you give me a property which I can describe by an omega regular expression, then this means I can represent this property by a non-deterministic Buchi automaton. So in my scheme that I originally started with, I can start with an omega regular property and I can construct a Buchi automaton for this property. Now, there's one thing that we need. Here we were interested in bad prefixes. Bad prefixes are something that t tell you when the property is violated. And actually what we are going to see in the next lecture, we're not going to take a Buchi automaton of the original property, but we're going to take a Buchi automaton for the complement of the property, because that's the automaton which accepts all behaviors which are bad. And that is the same paradigm as this bad prefix automaton because that was accepting all properties that were not satisfying the safety property. Yeah, so the same ID, but now using Buchi automata. Good. Um, I will stop here um, because of the fire alarm. I did not completely make it, but we will uh, continue the week after Pfingsten. I hope you have a nice excursion week next week and hope to see you back um, that will be Tuesday, I do this out of the top of my head, something like May 28 or so. 28, good. Okay, thanks.